We're going to uh, just look briefly in uh, Exodus chapter 33, just a little bit of review from last week. We've been looking at, at things that I've found encouraging, and um, last week we were looking at God and Moses often had conversations, and uh, this was, was one of them, some things that God said to Moses that are, are true for us as well. Uh, God said to Moses that he, he knows him by name. That's a, that's a good thing. God knows us. And that he, he had found grace in his sight. Now, I was thinking about that. How you, you remember how the Bible says of Noah? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's a pretty special statement, isn't it? You know that's true of us as well? <laughs> you know, maybe your name is not in the Bible. But, uh, well, some of them, as Sheila, that would be in the Bible, wouldn't it? I'm not sure. As a hell. Close enough. Uh, yeah, Azrael. Brad? No, maybe not. <laughs> Bill's in the Bible, it's just not a name. Um, <laughs> found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah, I thought, yeah that's, that's pretty neat to, to think about. And then in, in verse uh, 40, 14 of 33, uh, he said, uh, chapter 33, Exodus 33, what did I say? Uh, I might have, uh, could have said anything. Uh, verse 14, he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And you know, that, that's an encouraging thing to remember. Uh, God says his presence will go with us. We looked at that quite a bit last week. He said he'd never leave us or forsake us. And then uh, I wanted to take a look tonight at that last one. He will give you rest. That's what we're going to look at tonight. He will give you rest. Uh, and the more I looked at it, <laughs> it's not a real easy concept to understand because this is not a do-nothing rest. Most of us, when we think of rest, it's like in a coma on our bed, you know, with the doona pulled up. <laughs> it's not that kind of rest, okay? This is a foundation rest. Uh, do, you, do you understand what I'm talking about there? Uh, this is the kind of rest where you know it's, it's right, it's solid. And uh, we're going to look mainly in Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. So go ahead and turn to... Hebrews chapter 3. We're going to look at lettuce tonight. My da one of my dad's dad jokes was that uh, a man had come around from the government asking the farmers what they were going to raise. And his report said, man, we're going to have lots of lettuce. Because everybody he asked, they said, let us alone. Let us alone. <laughs> anyway. Definitely a dad joke, isn't it? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18. And we'll, we'll look a bit before this as well, but this, this is something we covered Sunday night, how that Israel left Egypt, came up to where they should be. God said, time to go in. They said, oh, it's too scary. We don't want to go in. <laughs> Now that's, that's what he's referring here, uh, chapter 3, 18. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being less left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I've sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. I'll just stop reading there. Um, entering into to God's, God's rest. Uh, the first lettuce is, let us therefore fear. And what he's talking about here is, we need to fear unbelief. <laughs> We want to believe. Isn't it interesting how even people from the same household can hear the gospel and one will believe and one won't. You can have twins, you know, and one will believe and one won't. And it's, uh, it's just a, a strange thing. You know, as Christians, we've, we've believed. But it's like, was it, who was it said, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief, you know. Uh, even as Christians, there's times when we, we don't. And when we don't believe the Lord is when we get involved in fruitless works. You know, everybody does things. Everybody does something. And a lot of religious people, and, and even Christians, do a lot of, they waste a lot of time 
Yeah, we all do. I shouldn't say they. We do. Now look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 8. He said, for if Jesus had given them rest. Now let, let me just say this. That Jesus, Jesus in Greek is the same as Hebrew Joshua. This is not talking about Jesus of the New Testament. This is Joshua of the Old Testament. But anyway, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. All right, so here's, here's what we're talking about is if we trust the Lord, if we fear unbelief, we won't be involved in all this fruitless, selfish work. You know, most people, we, we're, Doyle pointed out an article to me today how that the philosophy of the age is for everybody to be happy. Uh, they were talking about, what was it, social mar Marxism? Uh, and they're attacking all the, the uh, authorities and so on with the idea that everybody should just be able to do whatever they want and everybody should just be happy. And it's fruitless works. You know, it's, it's just a, a, such a pity to see people live that way. You know, there's a lot of work going on. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how involved people will get in whatever they're involved in, but no good results. So he said, the first one is, let us fear. Uh, we don't want to be like Israel where they come right up to the blessing and then back off, you know, because they wouldn't believe God. The second one is there in verses 11 and 12. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same, same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So he doesn't want us involved in fruitless works, but then he says, let us labor. <laughs> now, what's he, what's he talking about here? Now, that word labor there means to be diligent, to give it careful priority and action. And it's just talking here about laboring to believe, you know, working hard at knowing what God says and, and doing it. Not, not our own selfish things, but what God says. Uh, like he says in Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, we need to read our Bibles. We need to be with other Christians. You know, we need the encouragement and, and the rebuke of, of other Christians. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 is such a great verse. You know, he ties it immediately to scripture. The word of God is, is what will help us. It's the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So first is let us fear. We don't want to get involved with unbelief. Then let us labor. Now, unbelief makes us unsettled. Uh, there's no rest there. You know, like the illustration he uses there of Israel, when, when they had escaped Egypt, what would have been a short trip ended up, they were on that trip. Can you imagine going camping for 40 years with a million people? <laughs> Uh, I can guarantee you, they did a lot of work. You know, it, wasn't, it wouldn't have been easy all those 40 years, and every once in a while, God would have moved them here and there. You know, they went, went all over that wilderness. Israel didn't believe, and so they wandered for 40 years. Uh, very unsettling not to live by faith. In Hebrews 3, verse 10, it says, Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they've not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. So it's unsettling. When you don't believe God, there's, just not, there's not that peace that he offered Moses, that he offers us. And he gives a, the next verse is our real warning, verse 12 of chapter 3. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And mark it down, sin is deceitful. You know, sometimes people will think, oh, I'll, I'll do this, this will be good. <laughs> and you've been tricked by, uh, by sin. Um, Israel didn't believe, and, and so it was very unsettling for them. And he, he says in chapter 3, verse 15, one of the causes is they won't hear. While it said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, is in the provocation. You know, if we'll hear the Lord, that will help us to live by faith. The other is, in verse 19, just not believing. Chapter 3, verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. 
Sometimes people just won't listen. Other times they, they hear it, but they won't believe it. And it, it's, that's the opposite of what he's saying when he says, let us labor to enter into this rest. Faith settles us. Faith gives us that, that foundation, that, that settling. Uh, chapter 4, verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. See, our, our faith, and that's why he brings it down in verse 12 to the, to the Bible, our faith is in God's word. You know, it's not in our feelings. It's not in our culture. It's, you know, it's not in our situation. And, and he uses the expression uh, several times in, in these scriptures about being diligent, laboring. And we need to labor to believe God's word. It's amazing what we'll spend our time doing. <laughs> uh, but our labor here is to believe the truth. I thought it was interesting when I thought about uh, Philippians 4 when he talks about our thoughts. And he, when he tells us what to think about, the very first thing is whatsoever things are what? True. <laughs> That's the, the primary thing, the, the truth. Uh, he says, let us fear. We don't want to be in unbelief. Let us labor. Let's work hard at knowing what God says and believing it. And then the third one is, let us hold fast, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that's passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Now, he's just saying there, just keep trusting, and keep hearing, and keep living by faith. I don't know if we still have it. We used to have a little uh, fridge magnet that said, uh, don't doubt in the darkness what God has shown you in the light. Yeah, sometimes in life, things get a little bit confusing, but just, just keep on. <laughs> I had an experience uh, when we got back from our last trip. Um, every once in a while, I have to get up in the night and use the toilet. And um, I don't remember if it was the first or second night, I got up and I could not find the door. <laughs> I was banging around, I was looking here and there. Now, I'm sure the door had moved. Or it probably wasn't there. Well, someone stuck a wardrobe. Yeah, wait, I'm, I'm the one giving the illustration here. <laughs> when you preach, you can do it. Uh, now, there's a simple solution. What would be the simple solution? Turn the light on. Turn the light on. <laughs> uh, but even in the dark, the door was still in the same place. You know, God hadn't changed. And it's the same with, with life. You know, sometimes things are going to be real confusing. Sometimes you think, why is this happening? Oh, how did that get there, you know? And you get turned around, you get twisted up. Uh, the easiest solution is turn on the light, but don't doubt in the darkness what God has shown you in the light. Uh, remember, sometimes it's going to get a, a, a bit tough. Um, he uses a, a word there in verse 14, hold fast our profession, our profession. Uh, the Greek word there is homologia. Those words will sound familiar, familiar. Homo means same. Logia has to do with words. Same words, words together. And what he's saying is, there's, when you're saved, that means there's been a point in your life when your words and God's words are this, are, have matched. You've said, Lord, I, I agree with you. I want to accept your word, the living word. Uh, believing the same words as Jesus. That's faith. And, and even in the dark, even when it's confusing, we need to hold fast to that. And then as a result, uh, in verses um, 15 and and 16, he says, let us then come boldly. Let, let me read verse 15. Uh, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And, now the subject tonight has been rest. <laughs> uh, we've kind of worked our way all, all around it. And he, he's just saying, uh, we can rest in him by faith. Now, we have that foundation. And he talks here about the fact that we can come boldly to him. This means openly and, and freely. You know, the Bible says in many different ways that we're tied to him. Uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You know, we're his child and so on. We, like from this verse, we have complete access to the throne of God. And, and it's a throne of mercy and grace. Uh, so past, present, and future, God is always faithful. He'll always help, and the idea here is that he'll, he'll always help in, in time, on time. Uh, so don't rely on yourself. Don't rely on your situation. Rest in the Lord. L let me show you one other passage, 1 Corinthians uh, 10, verse 12. 
These are both verses that you'll note, verse 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. And that's basically pride. <laughs> you know, trusting self, not resting in the Lord. Verse 13 is faith. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So in our trouble, in our life, we just rest in the Lord. Uh, you know, there's, there's salvation rest when we initially trust Christ and his, his completed work. It's like what Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Uh, and, and the Bible tells us that's a, that's a finished work. And we've read that several times. In uh, chapter 10, verse 10 of Hebrews, he says, We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. It's a finished work. Our rest for salvation is completely in him. But there's also submission rest. You know, like Israel, when they, they came to the place when they should have marched into the land, and they said, no, uh, no rest there. Forty years of hard work. Uh, God's rest, like I said, it's not a do-nothing rest. Uh, of course, when Israel got into the land, they just all laid down, never did anything again their whole life, right? No. First they had to go. Then they had to fight, then they had to work. Yeah, there was a lot involved. But it, it's, it's the kind of going where you know you're doing the right thing. It's, it's the kind of rest, I should say. Have you ever been doing something, you think, oh, am I doing the right thing here? <laughs> uh, but when you know you're doing the right thing, that's, that's the kind of rest God gives us. Uh, Israel had to do a lot. And you know, in Matthew 11, he talks about the yoke that we have as Christians. Now, uh, I guess we're not farmers, but... My understanding is that a yoke was something that had to do with work. You put it on oxen or whatever. And uh, he, he said in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So resting in the Lord, it's kind of like saying, Well, I'm with him. You know, as you're facing life, I'm with him. Talk to him. <laughs> and I'm doing the right thing. It's that kind of rest. You know, we're, we're in yoke uh, with the Lord. And ultimately, we'll experience heaven's rest. I have no idea what that'll, that'll be like, but I don't think it'll be sitting around playing harps. Um, we can be encouraged. God promises to give us rest. It's based on faith. And uh, we, can, uh, we can certainly experience that in our, in our lives now through salvation and uh, through submission to him. Any comments or questions before we take some prayer requests? I always think um, entering into his rest, to me, it's where I use it for why we worship on Sunday. Okay. Because the first creation was the Sabbath rest. Yeah. We're a new creation, a new creature in Christ. And we've, we've got the rest. We're resting in Jesus Christ's resurrection, which was on the first day of the week. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely related to that. Yeah, that's where I started in Leviticus about the Sabbath and didn't. I decided not to present that because it's just too much, you know. <laughs>